What's up guys and the dream smartphone is finally here and no this is not the S23 Ultra from the future this is a limitless phone with the latest third gen under display camera that you absolutely cannot see Snapdragon 8 gen 1 chip plus triple 64 megapixel cameras I've been using this phone for almost three weeks now let's see how good the under display camera has gotten in 2022 is it finally time for brands to move to UDC from hole punches and notches is well I have all the answers. But first, let's start with the unboxing experience and this phone actually comes with pretty much everything that you don't see with the expensive phones, which means you get all the dongles, the 65 watt fast charger, and even a protective case. Right from the box, when you first boot up the phone, you will be delighted to see the display with no interruptions, no notch, no hole punch. It is such a fresh feeling. It's rocking a 6.8 inch full HD plus 120 Hz OLED display with very minimal bezels and curved sides. We also have a pretty fast under screen fingerprint scanner. Without a doubt, this is definitely the most beautiful front design on any smartphone out there. Now looking at the back, you can see it is very very inspired from the Galaxy S22 Ultra which is not a bad thing because the S22 Ultra has such a good design so I like that they adopted this look. We have a nice triple 64 megapixel sensor now with a telephoto lens as well. It feels really good in hand thanks to this carbon matte finish. Now let's turn our attention to the third gen under display camera and first up the visibility has improved so much like you cannot see the sensor at all in almost most lighting conditions. You can only see the shadow fit if you fold the light on the sensor in a certain angle. Now what about images? Well this is a 16 megapixel sensor that has a much larger bigger pixel size to have the light pass in and well you can see that the result is looking pretty acceptable. The X140 Ultra actually has a dedicated UDC Pro chip along with AI that is doing a good job enhancing the detail and colors of your selfies plus also managing the HDR. Now obviously the more light you give to the sensor the better results you're gonna get. As you go towards more of a low light scenario the quality definitely takes a hit. What it shows me on viewfinder looks pretty terrible versus what I actually get thanks to AI and processing in low light which I think it's still pretty impressive. Overall the images have definitely improved but it, there's still quite a bit of journey towards that traditional selfie camera quality. Now videos aren't regulated by AI so they look very noisy in low light situations so in order to get a decent result you have to make sure that there's enough light and uh, even when there's enough light it looks a bit softer so you're definitely not gonna get a perfect front camera video out of this UDC sensor. There's also other limitations with UDC like you can't do touch to focus, uh, there's no night mode, HDR also has a pretty tough time managing the light behind the subject. Like I said there's a lot to be improved so obviously not quite there yet, not at least until 2024 or 2025 but it's definitely improving each year. Overall I can say that this might be the best UDC that I've tried out so far in terms of visibility, in terms of just taking selfies uh, but video is definitely a big big part of using a front camera and uh, there's quite a bit of journey to improve but where it is right now you're not gonna see companies like Samsung or Apple jumping on this bandwagon and use UDC on their flagship phones not until 2024 or 2025. Now what about back cameras? Well they are noticeably improved compared to last year. First off it has a ridiculously fast autofocus like I'm genuinely shocked at how quick and efficient this autofocus is. It uses dual Sony IMX787 sensors which are flagship level camera sensors for wide and ultra wide as well so you get pretty even detail on both sensor. It actually takes sharper ultra wide angle photos in low light than my iPhone 13 Pro Max. You can shoot videos up to 8K or shoot pretty good looking 4K 60fps video. Uh, very very nice decent stabilization as well. The telephoto lens has a hybrid 5x zoom that can be extended up to 40 times. Overall it's a nice zoom range and uh, it's also being used to take portraits as well. I gotta say back cameras are pretty flagship level with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 handling the image processing. As for the performance it is 
top notch. I mean, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with 8 gigs of RAM. What can you expect? As for the software, we have Android 12 with ZTE's custom skin that has some One UI inspiration going on with one handed friendly menus plus iOS type control center look of the quick toggles. It's definitely a very plain looking UI for the most part with not a lot of features, but with zero to no bloatware, which is nice. There's a 5000 millimeter battery that is running the show, so on par with other flagship phones when it comes to the battery size. Uh, but something that is good with this battery is that it supports 65 watt fast charging, so it's definitely going to charge faster than the S22 Ultra. Overall, the ZTE Exxon 40 Ultra is a dream phone with a very, very beautiful, limitless design. If Samsung ever goes under display camera on its Ultra phone, it probably will look like this. ZTE has definitely taken a bold risk. A big respect to them. This is probably the best UDC that I have seen in a traditional smartphone. Hopefully they will continue to improve this each year and uh, will not give up on this technology because we want to see this because this is the eventual future for the smartphones. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. With that being said, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.